everyone, it's your buddy and pal, Carnex, Serenity Wargaming and Explanations. We're going to look over the Hyena Droid Bombers today. Hyena Droid Bombers are for the Separatists, which you can tell by the faction icon in front of their squadron name. Uh, they also have their squadron icon in the bottom left-hand corner of the card. Opposite side, you're going to see their point cost, which is 11 points. So, depending on where you sit at in bomber camps, either the hyena is not your play style, or you think it's bad, uh, or it's still too expensive, I personally really like hyena bombers, and we'll get more into why. Uh, I definitely think they're way better than Thai bombers for the Empire, but again, pros and cons of every faction. For squadrons, if you see that little bar below the name that's got the numbers and dice icons in there going from left to right, You'll see that the arrow there, that's how many uh, distance it can move. It can move up to distance 4. Next is its hull value for hull. Uh, its anti-squadron armament is 2 blue die. And its anti-ship armament is 1 red die. It has 3 keywords, so it carries the standard, you know, most part for the classic bombers, which is the bomber heavy. Again, bomber being if you roll a critical icon on the die. It does count as damage against ships, and you can do a critical effect. Uh, and they have heavy, which is if you're engaged with another squadron, uh, that squadron can move away from you. Uh, it doesn't have to choose to attack you, um, but you uh, it, essentially you, you don't stop other squadrons from doing stuff, but they still can stop you as long as they also do not have the heavy keyword. So pretty much your bombers isn't going to stop other squadrons from attacking your ships. Uh, and they will stop you from attacking their ships, again, as long as they don't have uh, heavy themselves. So, pretty much bombers aren't great for dogfighting. Although, in this case, I, I still feel like there's an argument that, you know what, these, these hyena bombers, if you need to in a pinch, um, you can utilize them in, in, in some certain way. But I, I do like the fact that they're speed 4. They got a bit of a little bit of a whole value there. What makes them... Most useful and part of their point cost about why a red die in their armament is because of the AI battery one, which is while attacking a ship, if they were activated by a squadron command, you may add one die to your attack pool of a color that is already in your attack pool. So essentially, you roll that red die, you say, ah, I was activated by a squadron command, I can add another red die, excuse me, after you roll that red die. So essentially, you get two dice. Uh, while attacking ships and it's again people are like oh but it's two red dice i'm like you know that's still not bad that's no that's about on par with what most small ships typically will throw out at long range and again for when you come up against like defensive tech like evade or pdic yes red dice are going to have the hardest time getting damage to stick especially Red dice, they have the double hit damage, but it, you know that's almost always going to get re-rolled by something. Like you see a pop up, and you're like, "Yep, eh, that's going to get re-rolled." But if you roll two red dice and somehow you manage to roll two doubles, your chances of at least one of those sticking through is much higher, and it's also just putting so much more pressure on your opponent. But again, with the with reds. They still do have the two blank sides, but that's no different than the black dice having two blank sides, you know. And I, I just feel like that bomber red dice bombers are are still good. So it just people are like, oh, I just want the black dice, black dice, black dice, and yeah, black dice are great. They have twenty five percent chance of dealing double damage, and the red dice don't have that. But if you're looking for consistency. I feel like you can get that from red bomber dice that you can't otherwise get. Now, if this squadron was not bomber and it had red dice, yeah, that is awful. That is no good. Uh, the uh, Some people will, will say that, well, accuracies, I treat them like blanks if they roll accuracies. And sometimes rolling an accuracy on a, on a red die, you know, if it was the single, yeah, that's essentially a blank. But if you're rolling two, I mean... Yes, you could roll the dreaded double accuracy, but even on blue dice, you could roll the dreaded double accuracy, and you actually have a higher chance of that. So, pros, cons, risks, rewards. For hyenas, because they're speed four, you know, they're, they're faster than any Army of the Republic bomber. They're faster than rebel bombers, depending on the bomber that's being brought. 
and they're on par with most other bombers in the Empire. If you need them to go shoot something that has one hole left, they're going to get it. It's got one health left. They don't have any defense tokens. I consider that a sacrifice well made, especially if that squadron, the enemy squadron, hasn't activated yet. If I can, if I can take one more thing out of the game, I'm going to throw a bomber at it. And if you are backed up by flight controllers, which most Separatist ships... You know, if they're being pushed by either a Recusant or a Providence, in some rare cases it can be Moonies, but typically they're going to have flight controllers, which means if you do have to throw a bomber at something, it's going to be three blue dice instead of two. So even if they're more focused on wanting to kill ships in a pinch, you can use them for anti-squadron uh, attacks if need be, but... When attacking ships, double red dice, I still feel like it's still not even hard that if you really want to go for the reroll route, you could get a uh, hard cell class transport. Typically, you're going to have these anyway just because they are so good and effective. But the question comes down to, are you wanting to utilize your fleet support slot for Bomber Command Center compared to just the always so good comms net, you know, the munitions resupplies, parts resupplies, those are just such great cards. And again, Bomber Command Center at eight points, like that's an investment that makes that ship a target. Uh, but I, I, yes, there's still there's still a case to be made bringing BCC with a hard cell transport if you're bringing a good mix of bombers and they're being covered by a, a pretty good squadron screen. Now, Bomber Command Center only really helps to hide a bombers. I don't think there's anything else with bomber. No, so it's like you got to bring. Hyena Bombers, and I'm still of the camp of, like, you don't want to bring, like, six or eight Hyena Bombers or something crazy like that. I, I am very much in the camp of, like, two. I can always find a way to fit at least two into a list, I feel like. Uh, four, I feel, at most, and this is including if you've got any aces in there, I feel like four is the sweet spot, and you really don't need more than four to really put some hurt out on something, especially... As we get to one of the droid bomber uniques, which is DBS 404. But I want to talk about the Bacchanoids first. So let's get into Bacchanoids. So Bacchanoids, 16 points. Uh, they are unique. If you look in front of their Bacchanoid Protot name, that dot bullet point signifies can we bring one of them. 16 points. They get a Brace Scatter. The, their, their other stats are the same. They still get the AI battery, bomber heavy. But their card effect is while attacking a ship. If another friendly squadron with bomber is at distance one of the defender, you may change one die to a face of a accuracy icon. So Bacchanoid only helps other bombers, which can only be other hyena bombers because that's the only bomber separatists have right now. So Bacchanoids is a great first strike. This is the first squadron you want to put at a ship to start shooting it. So Bacchanoids is not helping itself. All your other bombers that come up and start throwing red dice at it. What this ability does is that if they, for example, roll a blank, uh, they can change a die to an accuracy. Or maybe they roll a double hit damage and they've got another one that's at just a single hit, but they have like no shields left in that section and maybe they have a redirect. Maybe you want to like lock a redirect. So there's, and there's pros and cons. I personally do not take back, uh, back toys or back totoids or how, the prototypes uh, because I feel like the cons of, uh, I, I just don't feel like the positives outweigh the cons. I would rather just throw more damage in. And again, yeah, it's great for dice correction, but most of the times your squadrons, you don't care if you roll accuracies because the whole point is just damage 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 you force them to spend defense tokens that way when your ships start shooting those defense tokens then just evaporate so i don't care to roll accuracies i don't need them i don't want them i don't feel like that really helps me again in some rare instances Getting an accuracy can be great. Again, if they've got double redirects, they have shields everywhere else, and some reason the section that you're attacking has no shields, yeah, accuracy, like maybe they've got a green redirect and a red redirect, so you accuracy the green redirect, so they're forced to discard the red redirect. Um, so you can you can try to make them spend defense tokens or otherwise, you know, trying to pump like maybe a critical uh, die into there. 
But again, at the end of the day, I would rather just take three damage. And sure, they spend their green redirect and they move that damage away. But then the, the net result at the end of the day, especially if you've got more follow-on attacks coming, it's the same. It's... It's the same. <laughs> I feel, I, personally, for myself, again, there's some people have like strategies where they want to manipulate and make them spend tokens so they can then just keep locking like the same redirect or brace or something. I, I just, I never, I never feel like that ever has won me a game compared to just, man, if I only had rolled like two more damage and stripped more shields off so they had less shields to to absorb damage I, I don't know that's just my experience I'm just talking from the way that I like to play the game is I would just rather um, just keep hitting my opponent in the face with more damage and don't ever hit your opponent in the face in real life you can you can always say oh man I want to punch your ship in the face right <laughs> don't ever do it to a player don't ever threaten people uh, we're all here for a good time but back to back to noids uh, yeah I I don't ever use a squadron. I think I've only ever seen it on a table once or twice. And again, that it's just hard to make that kind of play style really work to your benefit. But some people like it just because it's 16 points and it's a scatter ace. And you know what? That's that's totally fine. The fact that it's a scatter ace bomber, right? You're only spending four, one, two, three, four, five, five points more over a regular hyena to get a scatter ace. Yeah, I definitely would say that's still worth it. All right, let's get into DBS. I love DBS. DBS is rude, rude, rude squadron because it has flexibility. I love squadrons that give me the ability to be like, what can I do to be flexible with this squadron? It's also just unique in that like it hurts itself to hurt other people. So DBS, again, unique squadron, still has all the same stats. It's still scatter uh, brace. It's one point more, so 17 points. Totally worth it. I, if I'm bringing hyena bombers, I'm almost always trying to find a way to slap DBS 404 in there because of their card effect. While attacking, if you are touching the defender, you may suffer one damage to add one die to your attack pool of a color that is already in your attack pool. What does this mean? Okay, so I roll up on a defender. It's Note it says defender. It doesn't matter if it's a ship or a squadron. You roll up to defender and you make sure that you're touching your squadron to that ship. Make sure you're telling your opponent that you're touching your squadron to that ship, right? And make sure that they're touching. Because things get bumped, get moved around, table shift. So you want to make sure you're really being absolutely clear that, you have, yo, this guy is touching this dude or these dudes. You know, whatever. You know, they don't have to be dudes, droids, clones, whatever you want to call them. Just be clear about it. Because I've had a couple games where, like, like oh, yeah, it's touching and I didn't like really call my opponent's attention to it. And then we get later, and the table shifted. Now it's not touching. We're like, well, it's not touching anymore. I'm like, but I put it, I told, I like, ah. So it's like, it's very finicky. It's a, it can be a gotcha. Just make sure that when you're putting your squadron on the thing that you want to make sure it's touching, you're like, hey, 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 pay attention. Hey, hey, see, we both agree. We both agree. We both agree. Okay. Just like you have to do that sometimes, especially if you are in a competitive environment, uh, just because you don't want any confusion to happen later. So that's an extra step. But what's great about this is that, for example, you're attacking a ship. So you start off by rolling, rolling you one red die, and then you're like, ah, I've got AI battery one because I was activated by Squadron Man, so I'm going to throw in another red dice in there. And ah, I can use my card effect. I'm going to suffer one damage off my squadron, and I'm going to chuck a third red die in there. I cannot tell you how many times where I've yeeted some red dice in there, and they all turn up doubles. Do you know the f amount of frustration your opponent feels when you just rolled six damage from one squadron? It feels great. But I've also have felt the opposite frustration of you roll three red dice in there and they're all blanks. And that doesn't feel very good for you. And your opponent's like, well, that sucks. You know, you, you're on both sides of it, right? That's just red dice. But I, it's worth it. It's worth it to suffer that damage to throw those red dice in there because... Yeah, you're making your squadron more susceptible for flak or otherwise. You still have to be selective about when you want to do it. But if there's a station nearby that you can go run to, get your health back, come back. A lot of players, what they'll do is they'll they'll fly in, you know, shoot, shoot, use the ability, they lose a the health. 
Next turn, they shoot the ship and then jump on the station, and then it gets jumps off the station back to the ship, and then you just you just play that game with it, right? So if there's a station nearby, if there's not, then you definitely have to be more selective and mindful that you're not placing DBS in like double arcs where they can get double flacked or flacked by two to three different ships, that they're not suddenly going to get jumped by some uh, ace killer like Wedge or Anakin Skywalker. So pros and cons to using this, but I, I love DBS because of just like, here's three, three anti-ship dice in your face and What's what's great about DBS is that it can it can throw punches. It can powerhouse some punches out. Again, as I mentioned before, if you've got flight controllers and you need something to go punch another squadron to make sure it dies, okay, if it's got fr flight controllers, so that's two two blue die, flight controllers for a blue die, and then if you absolutely need to, you can utilize this ability to add another blue die into your dice pool for four blue die, punching like a unique squadron. Say it's got like two health left, it's a brace scatter, you know, maybe you can you can roll the Hail Mary of you, you roll an accuracy to lock the scatter and then you roll three hits and then you kill that ace and you, you that's a sacrifice. Like, yeah, you used your bomber to do that, but you just took out an enemy ace, right? One less enemy squadron for you to deal with, have to worry about that's going to be more disruptive to your opponent, especially, as I said before, if it is unactivated. Using the squadron to activate to kill, especially enemy unique squadrons, so that they do not activate and shoot you back is going to save you more damage than if you're like, oh, I'll just kill it next turn. Because you never know what that unique squadron is going to do to impede your ability to do things. So again, squadron play, it's all about like what's the effectiveness of, of doing this compared to going to go bomb ships. And that is DBS. For separatists, uh, there are two clarifications though, so let's get into those. The first one is for DBS 404's effect, uh, do ship shield dials count as touching? And the answer to that is yes, because even though the ship shield dial, you only ever count it for like if it's overlapping something, it still is considered physically part of the ship because this matters for ramming. Uh, if you have a shield dial overlapping another shield dial, that's still a ram. You know, so yes, touching the shield dial is still considered physical contact with the ship. So again, making sure that you're clarifying that that's what you're doing. The second clarification is what happens if DBS 404 has one hole left and you use this card effect to reduce it to zero hole? Um, what happens at that point? Do you continue with the attack even though it's technically destroyed itself? Uh, does the attack end? Does it continue? Um, and as the clarification sets, like, yes, it ends. As soon as DBS 404 has been reduced to zero hole points, it is immediately destroyed and the attack ends without resolving. However, if it is performing a counterattack, the attack will resolve completely. So the reason for this is in the rules reference guide, it states if you drop to zero hole points, you're destroyed. You're done. You're immediately pulled off the table. Uh, the only instances where that doesn't happen is specifically in the case of, like, counter and salvo that specifically state you get to make those attacks even if you are destroyed. There is no such clause for making an attack. So, so pretty much just if you got one whole point left, don't think you can just murder yourself to, to throw an extra die. The attack will immediately end because you are immediately destroyed. Okay. Let me know how you've utilized them or how you've seen opponents utilize them against you. But that is the droids for the hyena bomber droids. I don't know where I was going with that, but there we go. Well, appreciate you watching the video, and hey, I'll catch you next time.